Brecker, and I'm a professor of mechanical engineering and biomedical engineering here at Penn State. Uh, my name is Brad Hanks. Uh, right now I'm working on my PhD in mechanical engineering. I'm Farida Azhar, and I'm a sophomore studying mechanical engineering here at Penn State. Uh, my name is Wei Zhang, and I joined this lab in 2015. My name is Joe Calagero, and I will be defending my dissertation for my PhD in September of this year. Right now in the lab, we have uh, four main projects. So one project has to do with origami engineering, and that's where we're using ideas from origami and applying those to engineering uh, materials and engineering structures. So we've been looking at what we call self-folding origami, where we incorporate active materials so that we could, for example, start from a flat sheet and fold into some shape upon application of an electric field. And then we could fold into a different shape upon application of a magnetic field. So my research work mainly focused on the finite element analysis. And I use commercial software console to do the simulations. I tried different types of elements to do the FEA work. I will modify the equations that the software is currently using. I should incorporate the constitutive behaviors of the electroactive polymers and magnetoactive elastomers to the software module. So then the module can predict the smart materials behavior correctly. One of the potential applications for that is uh, deployable space structures. So the second project has kind of grown out of the origami engineering project, and that has to do with uh, deployable probe tips for uh, a procedure called radio frequency ablation. Basically what it is is it's a tool used to treat cancer tumors, and specifically what I'm working on is improving endoscopic tools. Um, right now they're, they're very basic because of the size limitations and so we're working on um, making them open up or deploy more to make uh, treatment more effective in the tumors. So what I'm working on is collecting force time and position time data to determine how different factors like speed affect the separation of times within the probe. It's important in particularly in the pancreas to be able to very precisely target the size and shape of the tumor. So another project that we're working on has to do with passively morphing ornithopters. And what that means is that I have these robotic birds and I'm modifying their wing structure to make them more agile. And we're accomplishing that by uh, using compliant mechanisms. We're applying our design optimization methods to this particular problem. One of the nice features about this approach using the compliant mechanism is we can actually achieve this shape change passively. So therefore, because it's passive, we don't have to include any sensors and actuators and add a lot of weight to the system. You know, the, the military is interested in those for surveillance, but they're also useful, for example, in um, emergency situations where you can send in uh, an unmanned vehicle. Finally, uh, an area that we are uh, starting to get into right now has to do with designing compliant mechanisms specifically for additive manufacturing. We have a state-of-the-art facility right here on campus at Penn State where we can fabricate really small parts with small feature sizes and uh, nice resolution. One potential application for that is energy absorbing structure for impacts in vehicles. I really enjoy it. Uh, so recently the lab was working on an origami project and it's a very distinct project. Not very often you talk about origami engineering, so that was really interesting. Uh, and in general, I like the idea of learning how to design. Being part of the EDOC lab has been a great experience for me because I got to learn a lot about compliant mechanisms and design optimization techniques, which is something that I'm interested in. I would say it's, it's certainly more exciting than um, 
some traditional engineering work. It's, uh, you get to be very creative in the way that you go about solving your problems. This is one of the greatest things about my job as a professor is working with students. It's really a wonderful thing to see a student, you know, start on a project and, you know, learn and, and advance and develop to the point where they know more about the project than I do. And I really enjoy that.